California's 10-minute rest break law is complicated. This video will make it simple. Stick around because I'm going to explain everything that California employees need to know about rest breaks. We're first going to look at the basics of California rest break law. Then we're going to look at the common violations that employment lawyers like me see over and over. And finally, we're going to look at the damages available to employees who have been unlawfully denied their rest breaks. How much money are they owed? If they only missed one break, what does that matter? How many breaks is it warranted to get a lawyer or to call the labor board? We're going to unpack all of that in this video. Some basics. Which employees in California are entitled to 10 minute breaks? Hourly employees, people who are getting paid by the hour. Those are non-exempt employees. If you're an exempt employee, salaried employee, then you're not entitled to this statutory benefit, generally because salaried employees are able to schedule their own breaks. However, hourly employees, that's who we're primarily talking about here. Okay, so what? These 10 minute breaks, what are they? Are they paid or unpaid? They are paid breaks. You are on the clock for that 10 minute break. The employer is required to pay you at your normal rate of pay. Okay, so uh, when is this break supposed to happen? Can my employer schedule it right at the beginning of the shift or the end of the shift? We see that all the time. The answer is no. The law says that the break must happen primarily in the middle of every four hour block of work. So if you were working, for an eight hour shift, your first break should roughly be around the two hour mark, and then the second break should roughly be around the six hour mark. Okay, this 10 minute break needs to be uninterrupted. That means the employer can't make you do any work during that 10 minute break. If they do, a penalty incurs. Uh, finally, the employee can skip the break if they so choose. However, it's a very fine line between an employee voluntarily choosing to skip the break and their employer asking them politely to skip the break. One is a violation, the other is not. Okay, let's unpack that a little bit more. If you have a shift less than three and a half hours, you're not entitled to a break. If you have a shift between three and a half and six hours, you're entitled to one break. If you have a shift between six hours and 10 hours, you're entitled to two breaks. And between 10 and 14 hours, you're entitled to three breaks. Now that we got the basics out of the way, let's look at some common examples. This happens all the time where an employer says, oh look, our handbook says that you're entitled to a 10 minute break. But once the employee starts at that company, they find out that it's an unwritten rule that nobody is allowed to take a 10 minute break. Otherwise, they'll be fired. If they complain about it, they'll get fired. Those unwritten rules are definitely against the law in the state of California. Uh, very common for employers to try to schedule that 10 minute rest break right at the very beginning or right at the very end of the shift. That's, that's a violation of law. Um, when the employer asks the employee to record down on their timesheet that they took a 10 minute break, when they in fact did not. Or even worse, when the timekeeping system itself or HR uh, record down that the employee took a 10 minute rest break when they in fact did not. Also, very common, especially among less sophisticated employers, when the, the company just literally has an official policy, and it's great when they have a written policy that says nobody's allowed to take a 10 minute rest break. Very simple to prove those cases when uh, the employer just takes a policy stance that's against the law. Also, uh, very common when an employer schedules employees in a way that it's impossible for them to take a break. Whether they schedule way too much work for that employee and they insist that they get it done or that they schedule them in, in some type of manner in which it makes it impossible for them to take a rest break. Very common. Uh, finally, very common violation is when an employee is simply asked to clock out for that 10 minutes so they don't get paid for that 10 minute break. That's a violation of law. So, okay, so what? So what if you don't get a break? or you don't get a bunch of breaks, or over the course of your entire employment, you've never gotten a break. Who cares? Well, California employment law is very powerful. It says that if an employee skips a break or is forced to skip a 10 minute break, then the employer is supposed to compensate that employee at the regular rate of pay for one hour. 
So if you're making $30 an hour and your boss asks you to skip your 10 minute rest break, the employer is supposed to pay you as a penalty $30. And that can add up over time. So that's why we're gonna look at the remedies right now. Typically, when talking about remedies, it helps to put it in the context of an example. So let's play this out. Imagine you're a full-time employee, hourly, getting paid 30 bucks an hour. And you've been working at this employer for three years, but every single day, daily, your boss asks you to skip one of your 10 minute rest breaks. So as you know, every single day you're asked to skip a lawfully uh, earn 10 minute rest break, the employer owes you one hour of premium pay at your regular rate of pay, and that's $30 an hour in this hypothetical. So it's a simple math scenario now. $30, if you wanna figure out how much you're owed in a week, just multiply it by five, that's 150 bucks. If you wanna multiply that out to find out how much you're owed in a year, multiply by 52 weeks, that's $7,800. If you multiply that by three years, that's $23,400. That's a sizable chunk of dough that would get anybody's attention. So, okay, if the employer owes you that money, how do you go about collecting it? How do you get that, mo that money? Well, there's three ways. One, you can ask the employer nicely. Go to HR, go to the CEO, say, hey, you guys broke the law. Here's what you broke. Here's how much you owe me. Rarely do I find that to be effective. The second option is to contact the Labor Board. The California Labor Board is really effective at pursuing claims for employees, especially ones that are small and simple. If it's just a rest break violation and the person's owed $1,000, $1,500, go to the Labor Board, don't contact the lawyer. But if, and in most cases, this is the scenario, if you're owed a sizable chunk of money and there's other issues like unpaid overtime, meal break violations, Maybe there's a wrongful termination or a harassment claim as well. Definitely contact a private employment lawyer. Um, generally, employment lawyers like myself, uh, the consultation is free. And generally, with employment lawyers like myself, we work on a contingency fee, which means we don't get paid anything unless we successfully recover money for the employee. So I hope you found this video helpful. Take care.